I'm going to spend the next few minutes talking about a new book from O'Reilly called Making Software. As its subtitle says, it's about what really works in software development and why we believe it's true. This screencast is free to reuse under the Creative Commons Attribution License. You can copy and share it however you'd like, so long as you provide attribution. Let's start with a simple question. Does it matter whether your development team is located in one place or spread out on opposite sides of the world? Two scientists, Nachin Agapan and Tom Ball, tried to answer the question by studying the development of Windows Vista. They mined data from version control logs, bug reports, and internal mailing lists. To their surprise, they found that geographic separation didn't seem to matter much. What did was distance in the org chart. The further apart people were, the more faults there were in the software they produced. This is exactly how science is supposed to work. When you have an idea, you gather some facts to see if it's right. This is very different from most arguments among programmers, who seem to think that a few pints and a couple of quotes from a self-proclaimed guru are all the proof anyone needs. We can do better than that. Since the mid-1990s, there has been a growing emphasis in software engineering research on empirical studies. Today, most papers at major conferences on software engineering that present new tools or methodologies also present some sort of field study analyzing how well they actually work. Some are inconclusive and others have flaws, but on the whole, we're making progress. More and more arguments about software development are grounded in evidence, just like arguments about medical practices or marketing strategies. Let's have a look at another question. Does test-driven development lead to better software? Hackener Dogmas and others reviewed over 30 studies done on a variety of scales in a variety of contexts. Those studies found no consistent effect. Some had a slightly positive result, in some cases there was a slightly negative result, and some found nothing at all. But wait a second. Some of the best programmers around believe very strongly that TDD makes for better software. How can they be wrong? One possibility is sampling bias. People that don't find TDD useful probably don't talk about it as much as those who do. Another possibility is that people are confusing correlation and causation. Maybe people who are good programmers anyway are drawn to TDD, and it's simply not as effective in the hands of less gifted programmers. Or maybe the studies themselves are flawed. Maybe they're measuring the wrong thing or the wrong people. No matter what the explanation, this is still progress. Anyone who wants their claims about TDD to be taken seriously has to learn what the studies say and either explain why they're wrong or do a better study themselves. Now, as a recovering engineer, I'm naturally drawn to quantitative studies and controlled experiments. But a lot of the best work in empirical software engineering draws on disciplines like anthropology and social psychology. These studies are just as rigorous as anything we can do in the lab and often more valuable since they tell us what people do in context. For example, Beth Simon and Andrew Bagel studied what happens when people with no previous industry experience are hired as developers at companies like Microsoft. The programmers they looked at didn't run into any technical problems in their first year on the job that they couldn't solve. But all of them ran into social or organizational problems. They didn't know how to ask for help, or who to ask, or when to interrupt someone, and so on. It isn't a statistical result, but it's just as much a fact and just as actionable. So let's come back to making software. Over the course of 30 chapters, the people who contributed to it discussed things like the effect of programming languages on developers' productivity, whether using design patterns makes for better code, whether we can predict software faults statistically, whether upfront architecture is cost-effective, what we know about teaching and learning programming, whether the quality of open source software is better than that of closed source software, and whether good programmers really are 10 times more productive than average. We hope the book will do three things. The first is knowledge transfer. We'd like to get the results we have so far into the hands of practitioners and get practitioners to start telling scientists what they know, where the scientists are wrong, and what questions they would like answered next. Second, we hope that if we show students where our facts come from, they'll be more likely to pay attention to them. But most importantly, we'd like to change the nature of the debate. We'd like people to know that claims about software development can and should be backed up by evidence, and that we'll all be better off if we insist that people show us the facts. Thank you for listening. We hope you enjoy the book.